What's up everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to remove all the framing and trim from a window and replace it with some nice new framing and trim. Now, I want this video to be as quick and to the point as possible, so with no further rambling, let's hop right into it. To begin with, we obviously need to remove anything that would get in the way of us pulling this trim and framing off. So, the blinds need to come off and the air conditioning unit needs to come out of the window if you have one. With everything out of the way, we can go ahead and start removing the old trim and framing. To avoid doing any damage to the drywall and or paint, I find it's best to work from the inside with some sort of thin paint scraper or screwdriver to slowly pry away the old trim. Now, as a quick editor's note, I must point out the fact that I refer to this thin inner trim as the framing, but it is technically the casing. The framing, of course, is the 2x4s that make up the window frame itself, but uh, yeah, so whenever I refer to the framing, I mean the casing. So, now that we have all the window trim and framing removed, we start the tedious process of removing or hammering in all of these little tack nails that are all the way around the window frame. Now, there are a few that you would want to hammer in versus pulling out, and that has to do with any of the little wood shims that are around the window frame. You may or may not have these, and they will most likely be in different places. The people who were building this place originally put them there to make sure that the wood framing goes in correctly and square. So make sure that you keep those in place and any finishing nails that are sticking out of that, you need to hammer in flat. With everything removed, now's a good time to go ahead and do the cleanup. Suck up the drywall dust, clean the windows, do whatever you want, get it nice and clean, ready for the new trim. All right, so with all the old trim removed, all the nails tacked in, and the windows nice and clean, it's finally time to start putting the new framing in the new trim. And to keep it simple, we're going to separate those things into two parts. The framing first, and then the trim around the edges. So, for starting with the casing pieces, you want to make sure that you're getting very accurate measurements of the window frame. It helps to take notes and measure every single side because some of these trailers are just not built right and they are not square, so the measurements will be different. Speaking of which, there's one measurement that will almost never be consistent, and that is the measurement from the window itself to the edge of the drywall. So you need to cut your casing pieces a little bit more narrow than you might think you need, and I'll show you how to compensate for that later whenever it comes to actually installing it. Now, before we hop into cutting the new framing, let's talk about that for a second, because this is an area where you can either end up spending a lot of money or saving a lot of money. You see, it turns out this stuff is incredibly hard to find. Finding the exact stuff that you need is next to impossible, and if you can find a suitable substitute, for example, quarter inch pine, oak, or poplar, then that's going to be so crazy expensive, not to mention the pieces that Lowe's and Home Depot will carry are typically in one or two sizes, four inches wide by four foot long, or two inches wide by two foot long, something like that. So, finding the right size and shape of wood is almost impossible. If you do find something close enough, it's super expensive. So how am I gonna go about fixing that issue? This right here is quarter inch maple plywood. And yes, I know plywood gets a rather bad rap, but this right here can be split into several different pieces that are exactly the width that I need, and it is so much cheaper. By my calculations, to do these two windows, it would have costed me anywhere from $96 to $115 if I were to go with those four inch wide, four foot long strips, and not to mention, I would have to strip those down to two and a half inches. So, really not cost effective at all, this costs 18 bucks, I get two of them. Funny thing is, as you'll see, I only ended up actually using one of them, so the cost saving is even more than I expected. I stripped them down to the right size that I need, and that's that. I've saved over 50 to $60, so I'll take that any day. Now, ideally you'd want a table saw in order to rip this board correctly into the size strips that you want. However, if you don't have a table saw, you don't necessarily need one. As you see, what I do is I lay down some 2x4s for the flat board to lay on, and then a heavy piece of metal on top of that to guide my little cutoff saw. This is just me using the tools that I have on hand, so use whatever tools you have on hand and see how you can make it work. As long as you can make relatively straight and uniform cuts, you're good to go. 
All right, so we have the top and bottom piece for each window cut, and that's pretty straightforward, but I wanted to take a moment to point out some things that can really throw off your measurements. If you were to try to take a tape measure and measure from top to bottom of this window sill, you would not get an accurate measurement due to these wood shims right here. To make it even further complicated, this right here is a 48 inch or four foot piece of wood. And as you can see, it doesn't cover the whole height of the window frame. So the easiest way to handle this issue is to first temporarily tack in the top and the bottom pieces, measure the distance between them, and then subtract the total length of the longest board you have, 48 inches in my case, from the total length between the top and bottom pieces. This will give you an accurate measurement of the small piece that has to fill this gap between the end of this long piece and the top. Now that we have all the flat pieces that we need for the inside of the window frame, we're going to go ahead and temporarily tack those in. Because we need that framing in place to make proper measurements of the interior trim pieces that will go along the edge of the window itself. Now with the framing in place, we have a few things to consider before we start making our measurements. There are several different ways that we can put this trim around the window, specifically whenever it comes to how the corners connect. If you're using rectangular pieces like this, then you can simply have them butt up against each other and it looks fine. However, if you're doing that, you need to compensate with your measurements. If you have each side running the full length from top to bottom, then you have to compensate the measurement from side to side to be from the inside of this piece to the inside of the other piece. However, for this situation, I'm going to be keeping things simple by cutting each end at a 45 degree angle and then matching those two ends together in the corner. Now, I do plan on releasing a video in the future that shows you all the ins and outs of putting trim together, how to properly do coping and angles and such like that. The main takeaway from this is that you're going to need to decide whether or not you're going to cut the ends of your trim at an angle. If you're not cutting them at an angle, then you need to make sure that you compensate with your measurement what's going to be the inside versus the outside. And if you you are going to be cutting the ends at an angle, then you need the full measurement from top to bottom and side to side. So if we want to cut these corners at an angle so that it will match up together better, we're going to want to make a 45 degree angle cut in on each corner. The best way to do that is with a miter box. So we're taking the big flat end, putting it up against the side, and then we're going to make this cut through here from this line to that line. Now, it can definitely be intimidating to work on these angles and measurements together. So I would say start with one end of a piece of trim, make sure that you get the angle right, and then measure from long end to long end to get the accurate measurements. And then just repeat that for every other piece of trim. All of these pieces of trim need to be cut with the same angle so that they match together in the corners. Once you're done with that and have all the trim pieces properly cut, it's a good idea to test fit them, but if they're good to go, then it's time to take out all the trim pieces that were temporarily tacked in because it is finally time to start making everything look good by staining these pieces of trim before we permanently install them. Now applying stain to raw pieces of wood like this can be very simple or rather complex depending on what level of quality you want out of it. So given how much of this is up to preference, I'm just going to go over the basic steps and then you can take them to whatever length that you would like to get the results that you specifically desire. The first thing that you want to do is take care of any sanding, be that by hand sanding or motor sanding. The basic idea is that the more sanding you do, the more clearly you can see the grain and the more smooth of a finish you will have versus the less sanding you do, the more rustic or rough look you'll have. At bare minimum, you want to at least remove any splinters or burrs or very rough edges. With all the trim properly sanded, you wanna make sure that you clean off any sawdust before you go to applying the stain itself. However, something you want to be aware of is that if you use a paper towel or a microfiber towel or anything that will leave behind tiny strands of fiber, can have the same effect of the sawdust that you're trying to remove. So that's why you can see that I'm going over with one smooth pass, going with the grain and not really rubbing back and forth. I don't wanna get all these fibers from the towel onto the trim. Now on to applying the pre-stain. It's fairly basic. You just wanna cover all the surface area. And once that's dry, you can move on to applying the stain itself. Now, 
So much of this is preferential that I'm not going to get too much into the type of stain that I use or how many layers I use. I'm just going to touch on a few of the basic techniques you need to use to make sure that you get the best results you can. First things first, I know it seems simple and arbitrary, but you definitely want to mix the stain before you apply it. As you can see, in this situation, I completely forgot that step, and my brush just got all the base without getting any of the stain itself. Terrible results. You wanna make sure that you're mixing your stain thoroughly before you start applying it. And speaking of which, whenever you are actually applying the stain or just painting in general, any time that you're working with several pieces laid out side by side like this, you always want to paint from the furthest piece from you toward yourself. That way, any drips that occur are on a piece that you haven't touched yet so that whenever you get to it, you can blend those drops in and it's not as obvious. You don't want a big blob of paint or stain falling on a piece that you just finished meticulously covering with a smooth coat. But aside from that, here are just a few things to keep in mind whenever it comes to paint and stain in general. Different types of paint and stain will react very differently whenever they dry and dry to perhaps a different color than what you want. So it's always good to get a sample and try it out on a scrap piece of wood. To go along with that, you want to keep in mind that generally speaking, paint will dry darker than it looks whenever it's wet, whereas stain will dry lighter than it looks whenever it's wet. So just something to keep in mind. Once the stain is dried, we can go ahead and move on to actually installing it. And here's something to note. As you're putting this window framing in, you don't want to push it up against the window. You want to push it up against the edge of the drywall because the window is going to be an uneven surface and you will end up having a gap between the outside trim and the window framing itself. So make sure that you're putting the window framing as even with the edge of this as possible because that's where the flat edge of the outside trim will go up against. This little gap right here on the inside is fine because we're going to be having the inside trim cover that gap up and seal it. So with that in mind, you go ahead and install all the inside framing and all the inside trim. Now, whenever it comes to getting this inside trim looking just right and pretty in the corners, I have a few suggestions. First of all, start from the bottom and work your way up because unless the cuts that you made were extremely precise, there's more than likely going to be a little bit of a gap. And it's much better to have that gap at the top because that's where we will be installing the blinds and that will completely block the view of those corners. So. Start by getting the bottom corners looking nice and pretty, and then once everything looks good, you start to tack everything into place with the nail gun. All right, now that we have all the framing installed, it's time to break out our notepad again because it's time to take more measurements. You see, as we tack in all these frame pieces, it slightly adjusts the measurements from top to bottom and side to side. So we need to go back and we need to measure from this top piece to this bottom piece and from this side piece to this side piece so that we can get the accurate measurements for the outside trim. All right, so we have the measurements we need, but before we start cutting, we need to make sure that we have our angle right. On the other pieces of trim, we went from this inside edge to the outside edge with this 45 degree angle. But on these pieces, we need to do the opposite. So we need to cut from this point in 45 degrees. So once again, we start by trimming one piece to the correct angle and then we measure from the inside edge, which is the flat edge, out to the measurement that we want. And then we make our 45 degree angle cut in the opposite direction. All right, so with all the pieces properly cut and ready to go, it's just a matter of tacking them on. But you wanna make sure that you tack them on right. So you want to start with the bottom pieces first, then you work both side pieces going up the top corners and then you'll put the final piece across the top. This way you can get all the corners lined up just right with as little hassle as possible. And once you have all that taken care of, you're ready to install the blinds and boom, there you have it. The windows are nice and retrimmed, looking beautiful.
All right, so there you have it. The windows are nice and reframed, retrimmed, looking 10 times better than that crappy trim that comes with the trailer. Hopefully I covered enough to where you guys can follow along with this video and do your own projects. Let me know how they turn out, and if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to check out my Instagram page. It's the same name, Hope Streams and Duct Tape. There's a link in the description below. Because over there, I give you guys daily updates, show you all some of the behind the scenes and projects that are coming up so you know what to expect and overall it's just a fun little place to hang out but enough rambling from me i hope you like this video and until the next one i hope you have a fantastic day and yeah stay happy healthy wealth and wise i'll catch you later